Hello and welcome to the movie podcast at TIFF. My name is Daniel, I am one of your hosts today, and this is our review of The Fablements. Joining me along on this wonderful journey through Steven Spielberg's history is my fellow auteur, Shabazz. Hello, Shabazz. Hey, Daniel. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for joining us. It's always it's always <laughs> great, Shay, when uh, when you're able to join us here on the movie podcast. You know, all we the are... time. <laughs> Not like a part of the show. Not at all. You know, we are about 400 and almost 50 episodes deep in this. Wow. Um, so to have you as a special guest every single week, every single day during TIFF, um, and I know it's a big undertaking for you. So thank yeah, you. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we started it together, but no, no, no. I mean, you would think by this point, you know, I would just bring you on full time. Yeah. To the show. Show, but when are you gonna do that we'll see i'm i'm still waiting i think around the 2000 episode mark is when, when you i think you'll really hit is my loyalty not enough <laughs> <laughs> your loyalty is always enough now of course shay how is tiff going for you um again i i hate to be that guy but i'm but i'm tired i'm very exhausted but like the good kind of exhausted where every day at the end of it i'm like oh man what a day and i think every day is just this exponential climb in right. happiness and and just overall feelings that I'm kind of getting of from from being at this at this event because you know last few years it's been so remote that now being in person is kind of like oh my god this is what I loved about this festival yeah and, and I think that's that's the thing right I mean this is our first you know in person tiff that we're working you know as the three of us as the movie podcast and uh, you know Anthony's not here today. Uh, but he will be watching the Fablemans later this week, so he'll catch uh, he'll catch up on our TIFF kind of roundup episode. But today's been a day for the show. You know, we started the day as as you'll hear in our review of the whale. Um, we got to speak with screenwriter uh, Samuel D. Hunter, um, of course, who also wrote the stage play and the star of the film, Brendan Fraser, who is just one of our favorite actors, an icon from our our childhood, mm-hmm. and just you know sit around a table for thirty minutes. Just talking to him with two other journalists. And, you know, Shay, you were on that panel with me. And I think just being in an experience like that was very surreal. And then for us to go from that to go into our screening of the Fablemans. And then, you know, we attended an Apple TV Plus um, TIFF event. Um, It's been a very, you know, just kind of reaffirming day that, you know, maybe we're doing something right here on this show. You know, I, I again thank you to everybody for for listening to us for all these years and um, just supporting us because it's because of everybody that's been you know loving our show that we are here to do these things to to bring you all this stuff and get these opportunities right yeah yeah absolutely it's been it's been amazing uh, so stay tuned for all of our coverage of that you know we'll have lots of discussions coming soon our interview with Brendan Fraser and Samuel D Hunter will be coming soon uh, the audio is going to be something we're working on just because it's a little it could be a little listen if you're in Toronto you know the sound of construction is a constant thing so now if you're listening to this uh, this interview with Brendan Fraser and Samuel D Hunter you'll get to experience the sound of construction with us uh, so <laughs> there's, there's, I believe there's also a, a, a someone driving by listening to Gwen Stefani very loudly yeah and they decided, I think a couple times they were doing some laps yeah they were doing the some laps yeah. like have you heard of this great new artist Gwen yeah. Stefani and I'm yeah. like that song is 15 <laughs> years old what are you doing yeah so it's, it, it was definitely an experience but today you know it's all about the fail women but before we get to that as always, you'll be able to catch a brand new episode of the movie podcast basically every day at this point. Uh, you can follow us on all social media platforms at the movie podcast. Make sure you do that on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Letterbox. We're also having some great discussions over on Discord, so please go check that out. Shay has been uh, Shay's been updating the Discord server with questions of the week. Now I think you you made the official decision. We're going to go questions of the week instead questions of doing of the week. Yeah, I, I realized 365 questions is a is a big undertaking. It is a big undertaking. I have to quit the podcast just to do (laughs) the questions. Yeah. So every week we'll have a new question that we'll have some great discussions on it. We're also, you know, all in there watching a bunch of different shows. So it's nice seeing these conversations happening, you know, about the Rings of Power, She-Hulk, House of Dragons. There's lots going on. So please make sure you join that. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, please like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell. Your support means the world to us. We love that you're here. We love what we're doing. We want to keep doing it. Uh, But like I said, today, is all about the Fablemans. This film is directed 
by Steven Spielberg. And it's, this is part of the Toronto International Film Festival. This is the first film that Spielberg has ever had at TIFF. Yeah. So it's, it's really cool to see. Well, he's a, he's, a new, he's a new director. He's, a, he's, he's an up and coming director for sure. I think he might have a career after this, but I mean, we'll I have so. to see what the perception of the I movie think is. I think so. Uh, the film stars Michelle Williams, Paul Dano, Seth Rogen, Gabe, uh, Gabriel LaBelle, Janine Berlin, Julia Butters, Robin Barlett, Keely Karsten, and Judd Hirsch. And the film now is playing part of TIFF, as we said, and it's going to be releasing November 11th, 2022, unlimited screens, and then everywhere on November 23rd, 2022, by Universal Pictures. Now, Shay, I would love for you to start us off with your synopsis so we could start talking about this wonderful, beautiful movie. The Fablemans is Spielberg's most personal film yet. It's based on the master director's childhood passion for movie making and the family dynamics that found their way into his work. Thank you so much for that, Shay. You know, we've been seeing an increase of directors, you know, creating films based on their upbringings, based on their lives. But what I like so much about these films that we've been getting is that they're not just, they're not biopics. And the, the thing that I think makes that so special is that you're able to take liberties, you're able to tell a story, but you could tell a story that's inspired by what these people went through. And you're not beholden to, you know, who these characters have to be. Right. You'll get the themes of who they are, but just like what movies show us, they movies don't always have to show us stuff, they'll make us feel something. Right. And I think the the heart and the, the feeling you get from who these characters are, the inspiration, I think, is what I think pulls you through that I'm about, like that I'm about to throw a really far out reference here okay but I think when you see what I'm trying to say you'll get the dots that I'm trying to connect all right I want to connect these dots I'm getting my pencil so right let's now. let's look at you know like what you mentioned here you know you talked about these directors are making films about their personal lives while not immediately talking about themselves right should you I know. should I name the films I was referencing yes please go yeah. right ahead so for example Roma Alfonso yep. Cuaron and uh, Belfast with Kenneth Branagh last year films about their lives but not about them. them as yeah, it's it's that inspirational piece, right? And like everything, like the, the I'm sure the beats follow exactly like it was in right. their childhood. It it reminds me a lot of Eminem with Eight Mile, okay, and Fifty Cent with Get Rich or Die Trying, right? Like those like when those movies are happening, like why don't they just make it about Eminem? And you get it, you get why, because the sure their stories are compelling, but. When you put this other layer on there, it stops feeling like they're patting themselves on the back, and you kind of you 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 leave that atmosphere, and you go, "This is just a movie." But the, the fact that it's about them as well is what makes it so amazing. And I think what 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 makes that also what what helps and makes us, I think, fall in love with them more is that because like biopics kind of go in their own category. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this is a bio picture. This is something that we'd watch in English class or you'd watch in one of your classes in high school or university. Right. When something is just totally separate from that, you kind of, you have the space to really tell a magical story. And I think that's exactly what The Fablemans does. Mm -hmm. You know, if this movie was called The Spielbergs, it'd be a totally different feeling. It'd be something totally different from what it is. But what this movie is, it's just pure magic. It's beautiful. I was just completely mesmerized throughout the entirety of this film and you know S steven spielberg you know this may be his first film as we were saying you know up and coming filmmaker um no i'm kidding but it's it's amazing when you see a film and you see a film like spielberg has nothing to prove at this point no he could he could drop whatever he want he could quit tomorrow he could quit tomorrow and the work that he's done will forever be with us but when you see what he's pulled off in this film you just see the love of movies. You see the love of filmmaking. You see the passion and the drive and that 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 X factor that when you love something so much, nothing else almost matters. And you see one of the things that I, I always kind of think about when it comes to artists is sacrifice in the sense that you have to be able, you have to be willing to go it alone. You have to be willing to have those sacrifices. If you want to be the best filmmaker, Steven knew that, you know, he had to go to LA. He had to take these risks. You have to bet on yourself, right? You have to make that jump. And you see that in this film and you see just a story of a family unfolding around him as well too that makes this film so beautiful shay first reactions i know it was a long way to get to no, it no no but we were having a good discussion i didn't want to stop it no, what's your I, first reaction to the fablemans you know like steven spielberg is the greatest filmmaker of all time 
and, easily <laughs> and, and this movie is proof why not only because it's about him but also because the way the film is made the way it's shot absolutely every element of this film just feels like the culmination of all his work it does and it and i think what 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 really hit me the most was the music the the cinematography and there's something that you said after we watched the film that we watched this movie at the um roy thompson hall roy thompson hall and if you remember the roy thompson hall it's massive there's balconies and different areas and we watched it pretty high up i'd say yeah and it's also just for uh, you know for our friends who may not be familiar with toronto uh think of the building for Vought and yes, the, boys. the boys. It's that building. It's that, building. that building. Yes. Yeah. And we were watching it from such a high point. But you said something to me that really stood out to me. You said the, the movie was so beautiful that it still felt like I was watching it straight on. I got so yeah. immersed in the movie. <laughs> yeah. That I like the way I'm recalling it in my head right now is like I was watching it on a in a perfect seat. And I I don't want to really reference many lines from the movie because the lines in this movie are so phenomenal and the the messages hit so well. I really want the audience to experience it for themselves delivered the way the movie intended to. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It's funny you mentioned that because I, I was thinking about that. We we saw it from a higher angle, um, but my memories of it are all like, when a movie trans, transports you, it becomes a memory. It becomes a memory. Like, I think there's a, I think there's a line in the movie, like, a movie is like a memory you don't forget. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, like, you, it's like a memory within me now. And it's like, you don't, you forget about where you, where you were, where you were sitting. You just focus on that moment. And I, and I, because you mentioned the cinematography, I wanted to shout out Jonas uh, Kaminsky, who is the cinematographer who's oh. worked with Spielberg since for, the dawn of time, I feel. Since Schindler's List was their first film. And then they did The Lost World. They did um, Amistad. Uh, Saving Private Ryan, AI, Minority Report, Catch You If You Can, The Terminal, War of the Worlds, Munich. Um, list goes on. <laughs> list goes on. War Horse again, and then obviously uh, West Side Story, and every every Spielberg film basically in the last twenty years, he's been part of it. And this movie is gorgeous. This movie is going to be probably the front runner when it comes to cinematography. When you see when you see Sammy, who is our character, who is our conduit to who spielberg is in this film we see him working a projector this movie spielberg does something with props that very few directors do every touch is like important every movement is important you're seeing this dedication and this attention to detail that you fall in love and this only could come from someone who's in love with the art of films mm -hmm. in love with the art of filmmaking and the love of the art of the movie theater you see him working the film putting it into the projector closing the gap pu putting this in there and then you see the reflection of the reel spinning every single time on on them and it's like literally showing you that movies are a part of him film is a part of him it's so beautiful to see and I just can't get over how gorgeous this film was. And, and it was the sorry to yeah, there, but it was the sound as well. The sound. If you if you if you look if you think about this film again, yeah. you can hear you know the the, the tape recorder closing. Yeah. The, the real spinning. The real that same reel that was used in the movie podcast theme song. Exact same it's, reel. It's a magic sound. You know what that is? Even if you, like we don't, a lot of filmmakers, the majority of them, don't shoot on film. No. But there's something about the sound of that reel that's so comforting. That, that they, like that, I'm sorry to do that. <laughs> that just that was just white noise. Yeah. I think so she like, was. Whoa, I think static? she was hissing at me. By the I way, I was. I was doing the. <laughs> <laughs> she was hissing at me, but it's it really is a beautiful thing. And I just I go back to there's moments in this film. There's long scenes in this film where nothing is said. No, it's just a score. It's John Williams. It's p it's it's, it's pieces playing on the Who's piano. John Williams. John Williams. He, I think he's another up and coming uh, co composer. Uh, no, you you hear this music. And you're just transported. This movie does so much without saying a word. And you're just like, this is beautiful. And this is one of those films that you remember as someone who loves movies. And I'm talking about all of us. If you're listening to the movie podcast right now, I'm assuming you love movies. You're, you're, you're part of this and you're watching it and you're just like, this is it. You, you, can't, you can't describe a feeling all the time, but you, you can't describe what a movie makes you feel. You could only experience it, and this movie lets you experience it. This is a movie that I'm going to remember how it made me feel. You know, mm -hmm. the the feeling that I got when I watched it. That's what I'm going to remember the most, because you know, 
Daniel, you you and I have made movies. We we've, we've you know made our short films. We've worked on writing. We've worked yeah. on editing, directing, all of that. Do you think Spielberg or John Williams are available to work with us? I hope so. I, think- I mean, I some of this movie could have been based on our lives. Think, <laughs> right? Uh, we it, it was just it was just surreal because we're like, oh, I know the pain. I understand all this. Yeah, I get it. Art is pain. Art is pain. And yep. this movie just it has a phenomenal supporting cast. I mean, it has an absolutely gorgeous cinematography that like we mentioned. But on top of that, it just it makes you feel good, and you don't feel bored at all. I think that's what really stuck out to me. That I, uh, you know, at, at a certain point, I had to kind of go to the bathroom, so I was like, let me just see what what time it is right now. And I looked at my watch, I'm like, oh my god, like over two hours have gone yeah. by right now. Like, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't even realize. I'm like, yeah. whoa, like time really just kind of flew because every scene is, is is poignant, every scene is important. It all blends in to create this story that, even though it's about Spielberg, it it can be about anybody. It is. You see yourself in this, and I think that's what's so amazing. I do. Let's let's definitely talk about some of the performances oh, in this film. You know, we spoke about cinematography. We spoke about music. I think we spoke about Spielberg's direction. The cast of this film is phenomenal. Paul yeah. Dano um, has. You know, he's given us some incredible performances over the last decade. You know, we saw him in the Batman earlier this year, who yeah. was just utterly terrifying in that. But also, just it's such a wonderful performance. Then you see him in this. And he's just so wonderful. He mm. is so incredible as in this role. He plays Bert Fableman. He plays Sammy's father. Um, and he's an engineer. And he's just trying to come to terms with his son, Sammy, who is very passionate like him. But he's passionate about the arts. Right. And he's, you know, and, and, and Bert is very much the mindset of, I'm a computer person. I am, I am about hardware. I'm about figuring this out. I'm an engineer. And he sees that obsession that his son has with film. And I like that even though he doesn't get it, he still is like, I'm not going to shut this down. No. You know, and then you have um, Michelle Williams, who plays Mitzi Fableman, who's Spielberg's or Sammy's mother, who I think, again, I don't, we don't typically talk about a very awards complex on the show. character, very, very, complex a very character. complex character. But what a performance, too, from Michelle Williams, who never really... A heartbreaking performance. A heartbreaking performance and just such a moving performance that, you know, when it comes to award season, I think Spielberg is going to go two for two with We're Best Supporting be Actress. We're going to be this name for sure. Yeah, we had Ariana DeBose last year with West Side Story win Best Supporting Actress. And I think Michelle Williams is going to do the same in this film. She, she is never phenomenal, misses. yeah. And then we have Seth Rogen, who plays, you know, Uncle Benny, who is... He's fun. He's comic relief, but you see this this charm to him as well too and he's just like he's like that fun uncle that everybody wants right but but you know i, I do want to i do want to say that he's not your typical seth rogan comic relief no. you know there's no pot smoking uh, with, with the seth rogan no but movie. there is a <laughs> there is the, you, 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 you but it's it's like toned down a little bit it is yeah it's like <laughs> no. i can't do i tried to do yeah. i tried to do you, seth you rogan do with a british accent yeah like, you uh-huh, lost uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's he uh, Seth Rogen's character is just very very interesting because you know it's Seth, but at the same time he he creates this you know mirage that it's yeah. almost somebody else at the same yeah. time. But I I think for me, man, it, it, it's Gabriel Labelle. Like he Gabriel Labelle. I just I, I remember I'm, that name. I was floored by his performance. Absolutely floored. He was so likable. He was so engaging. It was just this transcending performance in the movie that I was like, wow. This guy's so good. He's such a good. He's so good, and I just I fell in love. Gabriel Labelle was phenomenal in this film. He this is this movie also is like a coming of age story, and there are some hilarious moments. I think we were laughing throughout. Just at some like again, it's comedy. Not that someone's telling a joke, but it's such a funny moment. There's such honesty in these moments that you can't help but laugh. And just, you well, know, we laughed hard though. We did laugh hard. There's some really, really fun moments. There's some really great, just a lot of clapping, a lot of laughing. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing when you're watching something with a TIFF crowd, you know, you know, a lot of the jokes, you know, a lot of the film, you know, references are going to hit. And this film just has a lot of great moments. It's just, it really is wonderful. It really, really is a wonderful film. Now, Shay, um, you know, we've been saying that we're not giving films an official review. Uh, yeah. Are we breaking the rule today? I think for what it is, though, because like this movie does have a date. It is going to be released later this year. Yeah. I think we know what we want to say this film is. Yeah. I think. And I think the only reason why I think we could break our TIFF rule is because 
it is a movie about film. Damn. And there's a lot of film reels in this a lot of film reels now if this is the first time you're listening to the movie podcast we do we don't have a traditional review scale we don't give movies grades we don't give movies numbers we give our recommendation it could be a skip it it could be a watch it it could be a banish it to the ghost land if you want (laughs) to to your queue add it to your queue with a lot of stream movies add it to your queue you know stream it um or for the very special films the films that really move us we'll give it something called a real gem r-e-e-l G-E-M, just so you know the spelling of it. It's a real gem. Mm-hmm. Shay, what are you giving the Fablemans? I could have done all this build-up, and you could have been like, oh, yeah, skip it. it. Skip it. Yeah, skip it. <laughs> I, I, I loved it, but I don't want anyone to watch it. Yeah, Shay and I, we did not plan what our final re- review would be. We said it would be a game-time decision, but it I would feel be based on decision. how our conversation was going, it's going a certain way. Emotions are high, and the mo- way this movie made me feel um, was extremely high. Like, my goodness, I can't wait for people to see this movie i can't wait to show people this movie it's a real gem this movie is pure magic it is why spielberg is the greatest director of all time as you said shay this is another spielberg masterpiece it's beautiful it's a real gem there's no other way to say it this movie is why we love going to the movies absolutely like there's very you know there's uh, only a handful of movies that we you know we've we've said that about this year and 2022 is one of the best years of film in all time. We've been really lucky. Every single film at TIFF that we've seen has been phenomenal. So please make sure you check out all of our other amazing TIFF reviews, all of our incredible interviews and coverage coming your way because there is lots more to come. The movie podcast, we're just getting started. You know, we're just getting started and we're, we're so happy to have you on this journey. You know, The Fablemans is a phenomenal film. So whether you're watching this at TIFF or checking it out later in November, make sure you make the time to watch this movie because movies like this, like we said, this is why we go to the movies. This is why we love movies. It's, it's, it's movies like this. And Spielberg, I think this is a name to watch, Jay. What do you think? You know what? He's going to be doing great things. So keep an eye out for Spielberg. <laughs> definitely do that as always this has been the movie podcast we have lots of wonderful episodes coming your way almost every single day this week with lots of tiff coverage so make sure you tune in for all of that and make sure you subscribe to us on youtube bring that notification bell like this video and share it with your friends if you like what we're doing uh, i would love for you to also follow us on instagram twitter tiktok and letterbox join our discord and write into the show if you like what we're doing let us know hello at the movie podcast.ca that is the best way to get in touch with us and we love to read your comments on the show so please go on and do that all the show notes are in the show notes below so check that out that was this time with the movie podcast and we'll see you next